Comprehensive Guide to HER2 Positive Breast Cancer, Stages 1 through 3, Decoded. Are you or a loved one battling HER2 positive breast cancer? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the complicated medical terms and procedures? Well, you're not alone. And that's why today, we're taking a deep dive into everything you need to know about HER2 positive breast cancer, from diagnosis to treatment. Hello, I'm Dr. Tharwat Gattas, and I'm committed to guiding you through this complex journey. Together, we'll make sense of the options and decisions you may face, empowering you to take control of your healthcare. Now, understanding the numbers can really put things into perspective. HER2 positive cases account for about 15 to 20% of all breast cancer diagnoses. This type is generally aggressive, but the silver lining is that it responds well to targeted therapies. This statistic brings us to the crucial question. What exactly happens before surgery? Pre-surgery treatment, also known as neoadjuvant treatment, plays a pivotal role in managing HER2 positive breast cancer. The primary goals are to shrink the tumor for easier surgical removal and to evaluate how well the cancer responds to treatment. Now, let's talk specifics. Most treatments will actually involve a combination of four drugs. Let's break that down. Chemotherapy drugs like taxane and carboplatin are generally the first line of treatment. These are paired with targeted therapies, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, to enhance the effectiveness of treatment. Together, these four drugs work in synergy to attack the cancer from multiple angles. It's important to note that each treatment plan is tailored specifically to you, taking into account factors like tumor size, stage, and your overall health. Importantly, this approach is adaptive. It allows for treatment modification after surgery based on any residual cancer cells. This adaptability ensures that your post-surgery treatment is as targeted and effective as possible. And speaking of treatment, let's break down how the size of the tumor influences your treatment plan. For tumors smaller than one centimeter, targeted therapies might be sufficient. However, for anything larger, a cocktail of targeted therapies and chemotherapy becomes necessary. So we've talked about treating the cancer cells, but how do these targeted therapies actually work? In recent years, targeted therapies like trastuzumab and pertuzumab have revolutionized the treatment landscape for HER2-positive breast cancer. So let's delve a bit deeper into how these therapies work. Targeted therapies, unlike chemotherapy, specifically focus on cancer cells, minimizing damage to normal cells. This not only makes them effective, but also often results in fewer side effects. Studies have shown that targeted therapies significantly improve the rates of pathological complete response, which means no residual cancers detected after surgery in breast tissue or lymph nodes. This is a crucial indicator of better long-term outcomes. Moreover, targeted therapies have shown promise in reducing the risk of disease recurrence. These therapies can continue post-surgery for up to a year, helping to minimize the risk of the cancer coming back and providing a layer of security as you move into the survivorship phase of your journey. Now that we've discussed targeted therapies, what happens once these treatments have done their job? After shrinking the tumor, surgical options like lumpectomies and mastectomies come into the picture. Post-surgery, the targeted therapies usually continue, acting as a safety net to catch any remaining cancer cells. But remember, the journey doesn't end after surgery. Let's talk about the next steps after your surgery. The treatment doesn't stop there. We adapt our approach based on what's known as residual disease. That means any cancer cells that might remain after your surgical procedure. If there are no residual cancer cells, the treatment generally continues with trastuzumab and pertuzumab for a total of one year. This is aimed at consolidating the gains made and reducing the risk of cancer coming back. Now, what if we do find residual disease after surgery? If residual disease is present, the treatment plan can escalate to include trastuzumab emtanzine, commonly known as Cadsila, for a total of 14 cycles. This more aggressive approach aims to eradicate any remaining cancer cells, further reducing the risk of recurrence. As we move further into the intricacies of treatment plans, there's another critical component we need to discuss 
Radiation therapy. Consulting with your oncologist about the need for radiation therapy is vital. The decision to include radiation in your treatment plan will depend on several factors. So what are these factors? Let's delve into that. Firstly, the type of surgery you've undergone, whether it's breast conserving or a full mastectomy, plays a significant role in determining the need for radiation. Secondly, the size of your tumor can also influence this decision. Larger tumors often require additional measures to ensure that all cancer cells are eradicated. And what about lymph node involvement? This is another crucial piece of the puzzle. Exactly, lymph node involvement can drastically change your treatment landscape. If the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes, radiation therapy may be strongly recommended to eradicate any remaining cancer cells and minimize the risk of recurrence. Remember, this isn't a one-size-fits-all situation. Open and honest communication with your oncologist is key to determining the best path forward. With all this information, it's vital to be proactive in your conversations with your healthcare team. Effective communication with your healthcare team is essential. Here are some questions you may want to ask. 1. What targeted therapies are available for HER2-positive breast cancer? 2. What are the possible side effects of these therapies? 3. How will we evaluate the effectiveness of pre-surgical treatments? 4. What are the surgical options and how do they differ? 5. What is the follow-up care protocol? As we conclude this informative journey, I want to commend each of you for your courage and resilience. HER2-positive breast cancer is a daunting diagnosis, but please know that you are not alone. We are here to offer you cutting-edge, personalized treatment options with a compassionate understanding of your unique needs. Your questions and concerns are vital in creating a treatment plan tailored to you. With knowledge as our guide and empathy as our compass, we will navigate through each stage and conquer every challenge together. Transforming battles into victories, one patient at a time. Tharwat Gatas, MD.